That's the other cool thing. They set up the whole uh, shader for you here at no extra cost. So things get plugged in where they need to be. And this is kind of where it gets interesting if you want to use something with the displacement map. So that doesn't happen by default. You have to have a little bit of setup work going on in in Blender. So let's go and have a quick look how to how to do this. I'll go and make myself a plane. And this could be something like a road or like a landscape or something like that. So if I go back and find just the material. So these are all um, 3D assets that I've looked at here. If I go and use anything like a 2D landscape or material. I thought they had materials here. New surfaces. Well, that's good. A forest floor or this one here. Soil, soil ground or maybe like a brick uh, wall, something like that. The search function is really cool. It, it splits it up into brick and wall. And if you then want something like a particular color, you can go and type that in as well. So if you want to have a brick wall that's brown, uh, and then it goes and adds that and just filters the assets until you found something that's cool. Like this one here, damaged brick wall plaster. That looks cool. So this is just a set of maps, essentially. And I'm going to use maybe the 4K resolution. We go download and then I'll go and send this over. And then I'll show you how to apply this to a regular plane object. I hit export. Because there's no 3D object attached, we'll only get a material there. Something else that's quite cool, up here you can preview your texture map. So you can make this full screen to really preview your texture map. So this one's the albedo or the diffuse, this one's the AO, this one's the displacement, this one's the normal. So yeah, they really show you what the asset actually looks like before you go and send it over. It's very cool. And in the 3D view, you get to experience it on an object and then you can look at it from all sides. So you can see it clearly has displacement and kind of it looks it looks very cool. So all that from within the bridge, I think that's just really, really funky. So Back in Blender then, we have nothing on our plane. So we need to go and switch to the materials and then just go and pick the damaged brick wall. Yeah, so it doesn't look exactly like it does in my other project. That's partly because displacement isn't here. So the material is set up, uh, normal map is in here, the albedo is in here, and the roughness is also plugged in, but we don't have a displacement channel plugged in. And it looks like the displacement uh, map didn't come over and that is because EV and also by default cycles can't actually display that so we need to first of all render this in cycles but we also need to tell cycles to use the experimental feature set here and if you switch that over then on our plane object here we can go and add a subdivision surface modifier and enable adaptive subdivision. So if we don't do that, if we pick the regular supported cycles feature set on here, we don't get that option. And it is necessary for the displacement to get rendered. So now I can go adaptive subdivision. It's kind of what game engines use on landscapes. When you go and zoom in, they subdivide the landscape so that it creates more geometry. And then when you zoom out, the geometry goes away and it is more lighter. It's kind of lighter to render. I'm just going to go and head over to edit more and subdivide this a few times. Like my 50 is probably enough. So that just gives us an initial amount of additional geometry. But we don't have the subdivision in yet. So I don't know if it's enough to send the material over again. It could be. It could be that it updates it. Now I can see it's already working. So that's... It looks like that is working. So you can see the, the displacement at work here already. And this is in the rendered view. If we had better lighting, which perhaps I can, I can provide. So maybe make it a spotlight. We can then go and rotate. You can see the shadows here. There we go. That's definitely got displacement on it. And you can see in the shading now that the shader has just got a little bit more complicated. But the, the bridge has, has set it all up. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to get involved in this. It's like literally one click goodness coming in here. This is how they do the displacement. So you have the displacement map here that gets separated. And then the, the R channel, I don't know why, only the R channel <laughs> goes into the displacement channel. Can't tell you why they don't use R, G and B for that. So very cool. And you can imagine the amount of cool things you can make with that. Uh, I think you can also increase that. That's back on the shading tab, isn't it? If I go to the real rendered view here. Scale, I suppose. I can put that 0.5 and yep, there we go. It goes in, goes insane now. So it's uh, 
it's more. Yeah, mega scans are seriously, seriously cool. 